With shortwave gaining popularity due to world events, I think it's time to talk about shortwave radio and how you can monitor and listen to it, as well as explain some of the emergency uses that a shortwave radio can come in handy for. So, let's take a look at this one today. This is a really impressive radio. This is the Eton Elite 750. All right, everybody, welcome back. So this is the Eton Elite 750. This is what they call the classic. This does AM, FM, long wave, VHF, and short wave, all in one radio. It is built like a quality HF radio. Yes, the case is plastic, but the knobs and the buttons and everything feel real quality to them. It is not an inexpensive radio, okay? I like to tell people right up front when I'm reviewing products that are a little more expensive because I like to focus on budget-friendly products. This is going to run you about 400 bucks. You might be able to find it for 350 somewhere, you know, a little cheaper, but I like to say that right up front so you don't spend 15 minutes watching a video and go, oh, I could never afford that. And I know a lot of reviewers that do that. They review super expensive gear, and then they get to the end, and it's like, oh, I can never afford that. <laughs> Darn, I just wasted all that time looking at something I'll never be able to buy. So I wanted to say that right up front. It is not cheap. It is extremely well made, and it is a really nice radio. I think one of the features that attracted me to it um, aesthetically was the fact that it's got these handles. Kind of looks like a uh, like something you'd mount in a server rack, you know? <laughs> you stick it right in there. Uh, it is not functional. It does not mount in a rack or anything like that. But it does make for a handy way to carry it around. And these are sturdy. They're not just decoration. You can actually pick the radio up by these and not have any problems. So definitely a nice looking radio and a very nice sounding radio. Now I've had this for about a week and a half now. And it has taken over primary monitoring of shortwave stuff in my uh, garage work area out here, up on, the, up on my uh, counter there. And we are going to move it over when I move it over to the antenna to test for shortwave. Uh, I do want to give you a little AM and FM look at it. I have it. We don't have enough airband out here to really, you know, have to sit for hours and wait for one guy to fly over into a private airport in town here. So we really don't have much. However... I did sit it out here while I was cleaning my car the other day and just let it sit on the airband frequency. And we did get a little experimental aircraft that was flying in and he gave his ID and that he was landing. So it does pick up very, very well. And that was without the antenna. Now, the thing about this, two neat features on it. You have the ability to mount an external antenna, but you also have a very decent, beefy, extremely long <laughs> shortwave antenna. This thing will go up and up and up. I would say it's about five feet tall, and it is thick, too, towards the bottom. It's not, you know, it's not, it doesn't feel like it's going to snap out of there in any minute. So it's a nice, nice antenna on it. So if you're in a situation where you don't have an external antenna, you can at least hear a little bit of shortwave. It's never going to be as good as an external, but at least you get something. Also, too, if you have something where you have an alligator clip and it's just a wire thrown outside of your apartment or whatever, you can still clip it right onto that antenna and get good reception. So... There are a ton of features. We're going to get into the whole, uh, whole features of this really quickly. Now, this one, you will get complete coverage from 100 to 519 on AM, on medium wave or AM. Shortwave frequencies as well as FM. Um, it is FM stereo. If you plug in your headphone jack, okay, there's an earplug here. Now, on the back, this is what makes this interesting. We'll show you all the ports on it. They are covered by plastic, but you have RCA plugs for a line out into an amp or speakers or amplified speakers, whatever, you know, the Bluetooth speakers that have a line in sometimes, you will get stereo out of that too. And it is very nice sounding. I plugged it into a Bluetooth speaker to just test it out, and it's very, very nice sounding. So I'm impressed with that so far. It does have a lot of inputs and outputs, and that's what's cool about it. You can even plug an MP3 player in the line in here and um, play it through this if you want to do the auxiliary on it. So the ranges, as we said before, the, B, B, the VHF aeronautical band. Now that's VHF with AM. That goes from 117 to 137. Your shortwave coverage is from 1711 to 29999 kilohertz. That includes reception of all single sideband, all right? So you can listen to ham radio with this. That is a very neat feature for those of you into preparedness or those of you interested in getting your ham license, you can sit and actually listen and see what it sounds like and kind of pick up the lingo and how things go. So that's definitely something you're going to want to um, look into. If you get a shortwave radio, you want sideband. There's also utility frequencies, uh, air traffic control frequencies, nationwide ones, you know, that they hand you off as you fly across the country that are on sideband as well. Uh, you can also listen to the military with the GHF 
what a GHFS or whatever, global high frequency system on certain frequencies. Um, there's a lot you can listen to having the ability to have sideband. A shortwave radio with just AM, you'll probably get bored with quickly because all you can listen to is AM broadcasts. And there are quite a bit. A lot of people like to say that AM is, uh, that shortwave is dead. And, you know, it's not anywhere near as busy as it was when I was a kid. But it definitely has stuff out there that you can listen to. And, like I said before in the intro, with the fact that so many people are getting an interest in shortwave again because of what's going on globally and over in the Baltic region, this makes sense for somebody who wants to monitor and listen in and get a really high quality result from listening in. So, you can turn all your favorite stations three ways. You can program them, program them into memories, okay? You can program them directly using keypad, which I love. I always hated ones that you have to function, enter, one, two, four, you know, and then, then go. Uh, this one, you're, if you're on shortwave and I want to go from 40 meters to four, 20 meters, I can just do 14280 and boom, I'm on 20 meters. It automatically loads it up. Um, you'll notice also on the display, there's no little trailing display after it. That's what this is for with, with shortwave when you have a BFO over here, your beat frequency oscillator. On the bottom here, I'm going to try to bring that up closer to you, your SSB BFO. Okay, this is a beefy radio, so it's a little heavy. So when you hear a station on frequency and you're tuning it in, like a ham station, and you hear a little, you know, it's a little warbly, a little sounds a little off frequency, you're going to take this and tune it to get to that fine tuning right there, those last few digits that aren't on the screen. Let's say it's at 14280.5. Well, this is what's going to allow you to get to that dot five. So that's a good explanation for it. The best way I could kind of explain it. Um, you do have attenuation where you can turn up your RF gain and your antenna attenuation. So that's kind of neat too. If you have a really strong station and you don't need that much overloading the front end of your radio, you can turn that up or down. It does have a sleep button here, so you can turn this to 90 minutes, 20 minutes, 60 minutes, whatever, and it will automatically turn off at the end of the night. Probably one of the coolest features of this radio. You guys know my troubles out here with demoing AM radio out here. We had one AM station that used to boom in here. Uh, they were 50,000 watts. They cut their power. They're out of Las Vegas, and they cut their power. So now you're lucky you can hear anything on AM, unless it's nighttime. But during the day, I can actually pick up that station using this AM antenna. This is probably something you guys may not have seen before. Uh, this is a rotatable AM antenna. It's a ferrite bar that will move wherever you need to move it. Now... What you do with this and how it works, and I'm going to show you the AM in a second here because you won't believe it. You've seen my previous reviews where my AM, I'm trying to desperately pull in this 720 AM and it's all static. And that's how it's going to start out here. But then we're going to do that, and I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit because it's noisy. Then we're going to do that, and you're going to see how well this thing works. So I'm going to put this on right now. Okay, there's normally what we hear on 720 AM. We're going to rotate this to about 80, 85 degrees. And you can hear people talking. Now, no, it's not great reception. It's there's still low power out of Vegas. But you can still hear it, as opposed to that. So that is really, really neat. And if you have a, uh, a distant AM station that you can't pick up, and that is a perfect example, because the reception on the AM out here is horrible. It used to be really good with that station and a few others, but you really can't get anything on it now. So that is definitely something cool. Now, if you do have an external AM antenna, all right, and you want to plug that in, say you got an antenna outside that's an external AM antenna, the plug there is right there on the top. See that? Long wave, medium wave antenna input. So you don't even have to mess with this if you've got an external antenna. This gives you inputs for an FM external antenna as well on the side here. And these do come covered with this plastic which I think was a nice touch. Um, these are BNC connectors, okay? That's your FM antenna, and this is your shortwave antenna. It gives you the option here in either one for an internal antenna, which is the big antenna on top here, or the external. You notice on shortwave, I have it set to the external antenna here, okay? But you can choose it. Uh, it is BNC connectors, so that will work great with the MLA30, which is what we're gonna use. That is the uh, magnetic loop antenna that I demoed in an older video. If you want to just use a straight wire, okay, and you don't want to mess with clipping this on here, you just run one of these wires to ground, like that, stick it in there, ground it somewhere in your house on a copper pipe, whatever, and you run this, put your antenna in, 
lock it back up and run that antenna outside as far as you want. Remember that height and length are going to help you out a whole lot with a shortwave antenna. So you're definitely going to like that. This is right now running on D batteries. It runs on four D batteries. However, there is a plug here, okay? And I'm going to give you info on the plug in a second. It is a 6 volt DC, 500 milliamp. It's a negative tip plug, okay? In other words, that tip in there is negative, so the inside. Usually that's your positive. So it's a little bit reversed, and I would recommend you don't lose this. Um, there ha this has really been the big complaint with this radio is this power cable. Generally, I'm going to run this thing on batteries. I'm not too stressed about the power cable. I want it to be able to be turned on at a moment's notice without messing around with plugging it in. and Oh, is it interfering? You know, because I have a power strip over there. And that's noisy as all get out. So I'm going to be running this on batteries, kind of to keep it isolated electronically from the rest of the, the lights. The light above me here, this uh, fluorescent light, is going to be noisy. So we're probably going to turn that off when we're doing the shortwave part of it. But uh, I'm really impressed with it. Now we're going to take a look at FM real quick. I showed you AM. We're going to take a listen to FM and see what it sounds like. You're really going to be surprised you have bass and treble controls on this. So this really can turn into a very nice sounding radio and you can tailor the sound to the way you want it. So let me put it on FM. I'll bring you back and we'll listen well, in. This, guy, this is a station out of Vegas. It's a music station, but they're talking so I can play it. Yeah, it sounds great. Well, he killed yeah. this woman, and there was like very little about you the woman. You can turn it up. All the stuff about, like, you know, it's very loud. This guy was a great guy. Let's move it on to, uh, I want to go to the talk station now here. I don't want to get too much music on here so they won't uh, get me for uh, 88, 9. There we go. There we go. So, there you go. Very, very clear reception. Really, really nice. And more is coming from, there's a lot And it of seems to have some body to it as well because you have your bass and treble and your volume there. It's really, really nice. It has some nice body to it. We'll go to the counties and the cities directly. All right. Let's get it set up for shortwave now. I'm going to move it. I'm going to put it over there. And we're going to get it set up for shortwave. I'm going to plug in the MLA 30 external antenna. And we're going to give you a little demo of what it can do. All right. I'm going to turn this down really quick. But we're on 40 meters here, 72, 79. Just let you listen. All right, so you hear there, that's a good... There's someone else talking on there. That's a good signal on 40 meters. That's kind of like, a, I would say, shortwave receiver quality. Really, really nice. Really impressive. Um, I do have my attenuation pretty high on this right now because I wanted to make sure you could hear some shortwave. Um, right now, the 40-meter band isn't exactly hopping. I'm going to move around a little bit. We're going to take it to uh, the uh, time frequency on out of Boulder, Colorado, and see if we can hear that. Now, you guys have seen me do numerous tests with this frequency. This is a great way to set your watches, by the way. This is the time frequency out of Boulder, Colorado. That is dead silent. Now, granted, I do have the MLA antenna coming in here, going outside. It's that magnetic loop antenna that's very small, takes up a little space but works very, very well. But let's try it on the internal here. I'm going to move this over to the internal antenna, okay? Let's stick this up in the air. Of course, now it gets quiet. And he's going to probably say, at the tone, the time is... Okay. Then we put it back on the external antenna. You see how much of a better signal. That's the internal. That's the external. So you see how much of a better signal you're getting with an external antenna. And that's why I tell people, if you're going to buy a shortwave radio for serious monitoring, put a wire outside. Hang it, you know, if you're on the 15th floor of an apartment building, hang a wire out your window that matches the side of the building so the landlord won't complain. Let me turn around a little bit and see if I can get you some more ham stuff coming in. Now you can hear this guy sounds a little off. I'm going to take that BFO and see how nice he sounded towards the end there. This is on 20 meters now, so we are getting some action on there. There's not much on 20 meters, and these guys are taking a long time to talk to each other back and forth. They're both mobile units, so that's pretty impressive to be able to pick that up. Uh, definitely a nice, nice sounding radio. I am really impressed with it, and uh, I think, you know, if you're, if you're willing to put the money in and actually buy yourself a good radio, 
a good receiver. I mean, I know some people will say you could buy a, uh, a transceiver for close to that price. But if you're not interested in becoming a ham and you just want to listen in, this is an excellent way to get started in that. I really, really like it. Um, you have all of your frequencies set up over here, all of your bands. So you can choose air band, you know, if you're interested in the air band, short wave, which we were on. Your AM. Let's see if I can get that again. It won't come in again. <laughs> Darn. Let's see. Yeah, see, it's so, it's so flaky with that, um, that, uh, that station. And, of course, your FM. I'm definitely impressed with it. It definitely does the job, and uh, I'm really liking it. I'm really liking the radio. So let's get it back over on the table there, and we'll finish up, and I'll tell you the last little bit of information I have on it, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so we got a quick little look at it. I still have it on FM here. You can when selfies happened, we had hear a song how nice that selfie. sounds. But um, definitely a nice radio. Um, not cheap, but not cheap. You know, it's, it's going to work. It's going to last a lifetime if you take care of it. And I believe these were previously badged as the Grundig, Grundig Satellite 750. Um, really nice receiver. I, I do like the fact that it pulls in stations I could never pull in before. Uh, it is like having a regular ham radio out here. You know, it's like having one sitting here right on my desk where um, I can listen in stuff. And the tuning on it is exceptional. And it does have a DSP filter on it, so it will enhance tuning sensitivity. And it kind of fields out interference from other channels. It does have programming. You can program up a thousand channels on this thing. It's a hundred for each band, I believe. I don't know why they say a hundred for each band. There's only four bands. But you can do up to a thousand channels. I already have a couple in there myself. The WWV, the Colorado Time Station. I have that in there as well. And you can do you can customize up to 55 channels to tune them to your favorite stations easily. So if you have a favorite shortwave broadcast on at 7.30 every night, you can turn on the radio, hit your programming, roll through your program stations, and you'll be right there on it. So that's definitely a cool little feature. And I do like the fact that it has an alarm clock in it. Not that I plan on sleeping out here, although for the videos I do sometimes, I feel like I don't get enough sleep. <laughs> but it has dual alarms. If you notice on top here, let me pull the radio a little closer to you, you'll see alarm A and alarm B, or time A and time B. And those can be, the time B is what you're showing right now, but those can be set for alarms. It also has an antenna thing there. It'll show you the antenna if you're using the internal or external antenna. So definitely a cool little rig. Uh, definitely does what it's supposed to do. And, you know, I like the fact that you can keep connected with this. Um, we see a world that's really changing around us a lot of times. And, you know, maybe we don't trust our local news sources or maybe we want to hear news from a different perspective around the world. Uh, there are still a lot of news broadcasts on shortwave. They're not as plentiful as there used to be. And there's not a lot of the weird stuff that people used to love to listen to, like the, uh, the number stations and all. But they're out there. Um, they're definitely out there, and it's definitely a fun hobby, as well as something that could really keep you informed during an emergency or disaster. The fact that this thing runs on batteries is a huge plus in my book. Yes, D batteries are kind of, you know, archaic, you know, nobody really uses them much anymore. But the fact that it runs on batteries and can give you that quality sound on battery life, you know, with 4D batteries. You can even buy rechargeables if you want and charge them up in a, in a charger. Um, I really, really like that. However, there is no way to charge them in the radio. So if you do buy rechargeables, you'll have to buy a separate charger for it. So the size on this thing, 5.75 inches by 14.65 inches across and 7.2 inches um, thick altogether. Definitely a nice heavy radio. It's 7.1 pounds. I was really surprised at the weight on it because it is plastic. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you and say this is all steel. No, it's it's plastic. It's fairly lightweight, but once you go to really pick it up, you're like, whoa, yeah, okay, that's got some meat to it. So it is 7 pounds. Um, I would say this is a nice kind of desktop, tabletop type radio, uh, maybe in your monitoring area. I have a monitoring area set up over there with my uh, HF radio, my 2 meter and 440, my backup power supply. That is completely off the grid, that little section over there. And this can sit right up on top of the shelf there. Um, I just put it on the toolbox for demo, but it's going to sit up on my shelf where I had my other uh, radios, and it will be uh, my main monitoring radio. I love the fact that I can actually, on occasion, hear AM radio again out here, because I kind of miss listening to my AM talk radio in the morning, you know, when I was out here working, and this will actually pull in the station at night. 
This thing pulls stations from Colorado, Texas, New Mexico. I was shocked at what I was able to pull in on AM with this. And having that ferrite movable antenna, that bar that can just move in any direction, and you've got your, your, uh, your distances measured up here, you know, your angle. So if you want to move it at 80 degrees, you remember every time I move it here for this station, that's where it gets the best reception. So it is a rotatable antenna. That is very, very neat. You have so many choices with this thing, with your antennas, your um, lines in and out, your speakers. I am going to probably connect this to an external speaker. I'll probably find an old, uh, an old beater somewhere in a thrift store somewhere, and we will uh, give it a shot and see how it sounds. But uh, if I run into any other issues, I will let you know. This will be what I monitor with, you know, when I show you neat stations that come in from time to time. So if there are any other shortwave videos in the future, you can bet you'll be seeing this one right here. So like I said, not cheap. You will find a link down below where you can pick this up. It is also in my Amazon store as well. They're 400 bucks. If you get lucky, like I say, shop around. Don't just rely on me and my store. Shop around. You can find these for like maybe $350, $370. Sometimes even Amazon has deals on them. So shop around and look. But if you want to see more specs or more info on it, the link will be down below. And if you just want to buy it, you can buy it from there too as well. These are kind of a dying breed. Unfortunately, everything's moving to SDR, little tiny software-defined radios and stuff. And I like them. Don't get me wrong. I have an ATS-25 that I've yet to review, and I want to. But um, I like the fact that you got something here you can really hold on to. I could see myself sitting in front of this for hours, tuning around, seeing what I could hear on shortwave during any emergency or disaster, as well as having the ability to have FM and AM radio in an emergency radio that's battery powered. So that is the Eton Elite 750. It is their classic AM, FM, long wave, VHF, short wave radio. And it is definitely a nice radio. And I'm really happy to get it. I've wanted one of these for ages. And gosh, I remember back to, uh, I want to say 2000 where I first saw it, or 2002 or wherever. When it first came out, I think it was the Grundig uh, 750. And I just was drooling over it. I'm like, God, that's such a cool receiver. But I was saving up to buy an HF rig at the time, so that had to wait. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. Don't forget to check all our links down below. The link for the radio will be there, as well as my Amazon store. This is also in the Amazon store. If you're interested in stocking up on freeze-dried food, which I would recommend right now, um, given the crisis we're seeing around the world, I do have my freeze-dried wholesaler link down below. That link will save you 15% just for clicking it. You just click it. You don't have to do anything. There's no codes to enter. Click the link. Boom. When you check out, you will save 15% on your order. And I do have a freeze-dried wholesaler video coming up. I want to show you what I got in this month. And then we're going to do some taste testing later on in the month. Uh, so I want to show you that. We have our My Patriot Supply link down there. Preparewithiridium.com. Preparewithiridium.com. You can get a bunch of good deals on there. Now, we have the four-month kit now for $150 off. And it was fairly inexpensive to begin with. The 150 bucks off is definitely a good deal. And our Thrive Life food store as well. If you're interested in getting started with Thrive, it is really good freeze-dried food. Um, you know, I don't like to pick favorites, but uh, it's, it's good stuff. So I think you'll enjoy it too. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.